Hi. <laughs> um, welcome back to Queen 2021. Um, we are here with the Breaking into the Esports Industry panel. Uh, we have a great cast of characters with us here today. Um, I am your moderator, Emily Zvinsky. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am a alumni of TCNJ of Lions Gaming. I was one of the original founders. Uh, and now I am lucky enough to be working with Futures First Gaming, who is sponsoring this event. Uh, so super excited to be here. Uh, and with us, we have Sylvia Gathoni, who is a pro Tekken player with UYU. Uh, Kelly Garcia from Evil Geniuses. She's the lead program manager for culture. And Adam Baugh, esports engine, and he is the client's operation manager. Uh, so I'm going to let you guys kind of introduce yourself a little bit, talk a little bit about uh, you. Um, so why don't we kick it off? Uh, I'm going to go in the order that I see you in my Zoom. So Adam. Take it. Oh, how did I know I'd be the first one? Well, what's up, everyone? My name's Adam. I'm the Client Operations Manager at Esports Engine, just like Emily said. Wonderful intro, by the way. Uh, you know, I, I was born and bred in collegiate esports. Uh, I was uh, one of the co-founders over at Rutgers Esports. Soon found myself working at TESPA and doing a whole bunch of other things, whether it be at uh, Blizzard or at Ambox and Mycel. All that other great, great, great stuff. I don't really want to talk about myself. I'll be honest with you. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Emily. Uh, Kelly? Sure. Hi, I'm Kelly Garcia. And again, as Emily said, I am the culture, the lead program manager for the culture team at Evil Geniuses. And the culture team comprises of our education team, which is probably the most important thing here, where we help with our Genius League, getting college kids into the esports careers, as well as educating K through 12, et cetera, on education and educating parents as well and, and educators to make sure everyone understands the impact of esports and how important video games are and how easy it is to get into the industry, even if you're non-endemic. Thanks for having me. Awesome. And last but not least, uh, Sylvia. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sylvia Gathoni. Uh, in the esports scene, I go by the name Quinaro. Um, as Emily said, I'm a tech player and content creator I'm from Kenya. And honestly, I'm honored to be among such great talent and I hope to share my own experiences, uh, especially coming from uh, an underrated region in the esports scene. Awesome. Very, very cool. Great people we have us, with us today. Uh, so uh, I'm going to get right into it. And the way we're going to do this is I'm just going to throw a question out there. Uh, I'm going to pick on one of you guys uh, to kind of take first swing. Um, but it's an open discussion. I uh, want to hear from everyone. So um, let's get going. So uh, as we know, Queen is hosted by the College of New Jersey. It is a place of education. Um, so, uh, you know, I wonder, like, what role has your education played in, in getting you to where you are right now? Um, and I want to start off with uh, Kelly, because that's, that's your shtick. Sure. And, and hilariously enough, I'll say that my like college education didn't really set me up for my career. Um, I would honestly say that I, the education I received was outside of college. However, I will say college has and, and going to school really did give me some of the core values and core um, competencies I needed to succeed. So I went to Savannah College of Art and Design for two years, studied art direction, things like that, and then transferred into marketing. I'm clearly not a marketing manager and not a designer. So like definitely didn't do those things, but what it helped me with was working in a team doing presentations, you know, getting myself out there. I had some great classes that I took that were related to networking, related to building my own personal brand. Um, so that stuff really, really helped for me. And I also, you know, used college more for opportunities and to find opportunities outside of school or internships and things like that, that also prepared me for the real world um, and got my feet wet um, to where I became a really great project manager and now I'm a program manager. So kind of a weird trajectory, but I will say it really did help in its own kind of odd, not my major kind of way. Uh, I'll, I'll go right after that because I'm, I'm right there with Kelly. My undergrad degree was famously in exercise science and sports studies. Your boy was trying to be a physical therapist and be a good Asian son. Uh, didn't quite work out that way, of course, clearly. <clears throat> 
And uh, in that way, though, it's not like going to Rutgers was a bad thing for me. I went there for both undergrad and grad school. Uh, in a lot of ways, I'd say Rutgers shaped me into the person that I am today because of the experiences that I had outside the classroom, especially at Rutgers Esports. Uh, and just working with the crew there, creating like this, this grassroots movement just when collegiate esports is really taking off in 2014. So in that way, like I, I want to be where I am. Uh, today without Rutgers Esports, because that's what led me to Tespa, that's what led me to Ambox, I'm like, so Blizzard, well, you know, you name it, everything I am now, uh, currently at Esports, and just because of that start that I had at Rutgers Esports, so um, it was instrumental in that way, and, and just because I didn't necessarily go to school for marketing or community or client relations as where I'm at now, client operations, doesn't necessarily mean that I didn't learn anything, that, that kind of helped me transfer those skills over uh, to um, all the jobs that I've had since uh, there was a lot of different uh, classes that I took for being in the kind of uh, exercise science and sports studies, just like overall program sort of thing where I talked to marketing people, talked to business people, talked to traditional sports professors who were more than willing, uh, I suppose, surprisingly to most people when I tell them that they were able and, and wanted to help me because they recognized the potential of esports. They saw where it was going. They wanted to help me make it something great with the rest of my team uh, at Rutgers. So uh, I definitely learned a lot in, uh, in that way. Um, it was amazing. And of course, it helped me meet some amazing people like Toon Roxas, who's in chat right now. Shout out to Toon Roxas. Uh, it's been an amazing journey so far. So uh, Rutgers, big shout out for everything they've done for me. Awesome. Very cool. Sylvia, how about you? Um, I can honestly kind of relate with um, Adam uh, in that my degree, uh, I did, my degree didn't exactly help me into getting into the esports scene because at the time I became a, I decided to go pro. Um, I was actually still in university, start uh, doing my law degree, and I just decided to start signing up for compet uh, gaming competitions out of boredom and knowing that I had so much free time um, outside of my classes and studies. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to just start playing. Uh, I started Mortal Kombat, actually. Then um, in 2018, that's when I transitioned into tech. And then um, uh, Exit Gaming, my first uh, esports team, reached out to me, uh, saying that they were interested in sending me on. Um, but funny enough, uh, once I continued with my law uh, studies and I started uh, you know, getting more involved in, you know, like esports news and reading up on the current uh, issues. I realized that there's a bit of a niche, uh, niche in that um, the esports slash um, gaming scene isn't uh, regulated in terms of uh, creating ethical microtransactions. And I also noted that that's something that needs to be resolved because uh, you know, in as much as we're making technological advancements, the law hasn't really caught up with, you know, making sure that these things are done in, the ma in a manner that won't harm the consumers. So I actually did my bachelor thesis slash um, dissertation on micro, you know, microtransactions in gaming. And I used uh, my country's uh, laws to, you know, do a comparison and also read up or and I also read up and wrote on what uh, countries in the EU and the, and not also the United States has uh, done in you know trying to combat this issue so I also felt it's also important to start having these discussions and you know lobbying our policymakers to make sure that we are in a more ethical in you know you know in a more ethical space yeah that's awesome um, and I think it, I think it's really interesting because you know all of us, myself included, didn't come from you know studying esports in college. Um, we all come from different backgrounds, be it sports science or law or you know English. Um, but um, yeah, I think that's really interesting. But now it seems like a lot of universities and even younger are starting to pivot to looking at gaming as not just like something that you do in your free time but an actual major um i know you know kelly again education is your shtick uh and i know uh adam i believe you uh taught a college course or are teaching uh a still university am course? still am yeah correct awesome yeah, yeah. um do you want to talk about that a little bit uh sure uh so uh, I teach a class at University of California, Irvine, as part of their uh, esports management certificate program. Um, the class I teach is esports operations. Basically, I give people kind of a look behind the scenes of what it's like to run a team in the esports space, given my experience at Ambox and Mike Sell and Subliners, that sort of thing. Um, relatively short course. It's only six weeks, but we cover a lot. We try to, I try to 
make it so they get the most out of it without going super, super in-depth sort of thing. Uh, but it's definitely been a lot of fun. I've been doing it for over a year now. And actually, my, my last class for, for this quarter is tomorrow. So uh, definitely looking forward to it and sharing that with the students. And uh, it's, it's definitely been a very rewarding experience seeing so many of those students learn a lot, but also some of them have even gone on to the industry and gotten jobs there, which is, of course, as a teacher, something that always feels very fulfilling. It's so awesome cool that schools are doing that now. Like, I, sorry, but like, I, I, maybe I'm the old lady here, but like, I, when I went to college, I graduated 2010, so 11 years ago, esports and barely like game design was in my college because I went to an art school, but like esports wasn't an extracurricular. It wasn't a class. Like, it was still so new that like, we just didn't know. So like, I would have never had any idea until I met my husband, who's a producer. Um, he was a producer in Minecraft right now. And like, he's the gaming guy. And I was like, oh, like there's so much that exists and then joining EG and like, it's just so cool. It's so cool that people have the opportunity to teach at colleges and kids can take these classes or be a part of organizations like this that like teach them that this is a cool thing and you can totally do it as a career. Right. I love it, it's so awesome really is we're in a really exciting time right now um we're starting to be recognized as you said like a, a solid stable career uh sylvia i also um i hear that you are also part of an ed a, an educational course can you speak to that a little bit um all right so the university of michigan approached me um to ask if i could contribute to their esports teach out course um it's on it's available on coursera and also on their website so i just basically talked about my own personal experiences with you know the esports space and what i feel could be done in the regulation of microtransactions because that's become a bit of a passion project of mine um as i said i feel that uh, it's about time we started talking about you know uh, making you know put, uh, making sure that the laws are up to standard them and just make the space you know their space um a little bit more safer especially as um especially since a lot of these games tend to be marketed towards children um who are seven years uh, going up and i also feel like um being one of the pioneers in the african esports slash gaming scene i feel that it's kind of my responsibility to leave the space better than i found it when i was starting out i wouldn't want to let you know uh the generation behind me go through the same challenges that i've gone through and also um i don't know i don't i don't want like in future that uh when uh when let's say my young like my younger siblings are coming up and they start they say that you were in this space you had the chance to make leave things uh better than you found it but you left us to the sharks slash the wolves so you know you sold us out i don't something like that to kind of occur in future yeah yeah, it really does. I, you know, it's great that I meet so many people, professionals in the industry that really have that mindset that, you know, coming in, we're building this industry, not just for ourselves, but for the people who follow us. Um, and I think that's something that, while not unique necessarily to the esports industry, uh, is something that isn't as common as maybe it should be in a lot of other industries. Um, so I think that's really respectable. And one of the things that I just really, really love uh, about this space. Um, but so while we're on the topic of um, things growing and changing, um, I know we're creating more and more opportunities with every expansion that this industry does. Um, but I think at the very least for me, when I was graduating college recently, um, it, it was hard to parse what was uh, a, a good opportunity, something that I think I would really grow into versus something that maybe wasn't necessarily for me or something that maybe I would have outgrown really quickly. So how do you kind of, how do you parse that? How do you figure out like what's a good opportunity from maybe something that you should pass over if, if that even exists? Um, so uh, Kelly, can you speak to that? Sure, yeah. Um, and uh, Evil Geniuses is probably the best example of this for me, I gotta say because when I was looking for a new job and you now I came from Ubisoft, which let's gloss over all <laughs> Ubisoft yeah. drama, but I came yeah. from Ubisoft as my career before Evil Geniuses. I was a project manager on the brand team. Um, and what I found myself doing 
is first, and I do this with every job, but I think as I've gotten older, I did this more with this job because we were looking at moving across, like moving to a new state. Um, and I was introspective, right? I looked at myself and I said, what is important to me? You know, I'm, I'm at this age where I don't, or at this point in my career, right? At that point, you know, granted, this is a little different from getting out of college, but I think it's still important where I looked at myself and I said, what, what values, like, what are my values? What do I deem important? I thought DEI was hyper important for me. Having women in leadership was really important. Having equal pay, all of these things meant a lot to me and also working for a mission driven business, right? I wanted to work somewhere that wasn't just trying to get money or make cool shit, excuse my language. But I like, I wanted to work for someone that had a real goal. So when I found evil geniuses and I said, A, they're cool, right? Like I was like, great, like they're professional esports. That's really fun. But then I looked deeper and I said, they're committed to educating youth. They're committed to bringing esports to everyone, to creating athletes in the boardroom and outside of the boardroom, and professionals that way as well. Nicole LaPointe Jameson is the CEO. I was like, like a great, like women in leadership. My boss is the chief culture officer, Jessica Hammond, another woman in leadership. And I was like, that's so, that so aligns with what I want. So first I built that list, right? And I built that list, introspective list. And then when I started looking for companies, I found those things. And I was like, money to me was no longer as important, like equal pay, yes, but like getting a high salary, no longer that important. It was the values behind the company. And that's kind of how I found EG and I've been there for over a year now. And everything is exactly how I thought it was gonna be. So like, if you do that and you do the research and you do the, the inner look and then the research and you make sure they match and everything goes together, there's a really good chance it is a good opportunity. And as a reminder, like someone else's good opportunity won't be your good opportunity and vice versa. Like, I don't know if everyone want to work at Evil Geniuses. I would love you all to, but like I, everyone's different. So that's kind of my perspective. Yeah, awesome. And uh, Adam, I know, as you said, uh, you had previously uh, worked for TESPA, um, which I know was an, uh, yeah, there's the shirt, <laughs> was an opportunity goldmine for a lot of colleges. So can you, can you speak to that? Sure. Uh, you know, the initial question, I, I just want to get back to that. Then yeah, I'll, I can talk about Tesla literally like for, for five panels. So don't worry. <laughs> um, I, I think more than anything, and this usually my biggest piece of advice, not just to like aspiring esports professionals, but just people in general is like, when you're going through life more than anything, you need to figure out like, like what you actually want and what makes you happy. Right. Not like what your parents say, not what your friends say, not even like what society says, like you have to figure out, like, this is the thing that I love to do. This is the thing that sets my heart on fire, whatever it is. Uh, and that I want to figure it. And that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And it's okay if you don't know that answer. Right. Right. Like it's really hard, especially when you're that, at that college age, right. Where you're just experiencing life. You're just experiencing these new things where you're not really sure what exactly it is that makes you happy. Um, and so what my advice uh, in that regard is to always just try things, figure it out, experiment, see what you like and see what you don't like. And once you get all those experiences, you're going to be able to have a much better idea of like, okay, this is what I actually really want to do. And once you actually really know what you want to do, then you can go after that with everything, you can, like completely tunnel vision, you can go in there and dedicate everything that you have to that craft. Um, and, and in that way, I, I think that's the, the most important thing is like, be, having that self-awareness of who you are and what you want will help you a lot in terms of determining if, if an opportunity is right for you or if you feel like that it's something that's going to add to, to your kind of journey. At the same time, of course, like let's not kid ourselves, there's a whole bunch of snake oil salesmen in esports, not going to name any names, but um, those are things where you have to do your research. But at the same time, you also um, have to, uh, it comes with experience too, where you can kind of suss things out. Like, you know, I'm sure all of us played enough among us where we can figure out when someone's being sus. You just have to actually put that experience IRL instead of, uh, only from among us. Now, in terms of, uh, TESPA, I mean, what do you even say about TESPA? The single most impactful organization in my entire life. TESPA was this organization better, uh, I, I suppose in layman's terms, Blizzard's collegiate esports program. Um, that revolutionized so many of, of aspiring esports professionals. Um, if you look through so many esports professionals today who are younger and who are making waves in the space, so many of them came from that TESPA system because for once, and this is something that I love about EG and that, that Kelly is kind of doing, is that there was someone in the industry that, that reached out to, to these 
uh, all of these, I'll call them kids, even though they're all in college, these kids who just had these wild esports dreams, myself included, and said like, hey, you're doing amazing work. We want to let you know that we see you, we hear you, and that we validate you. I know that was big for me. Being, being able to go to the Tesla Summer Retreat in 2016, still the greatest weekend of my life, single most important event in my life. I still remember all those feelings that I had of just like, wow, it feels so good to, to not only be recognized by you know, my peers, but at the same time to be recognized by leaders in this space and being told like, we see you, you're doing a great job and we want to help you so that you can keep on doing a better job. And it's really because of that retreat and subsequently TESPA and everything that kind of happened after that, that that made me push to, to, to go to esports, right? Like I said before, even when I graduated, your boy was still on like, all right, I'm going to ride off into the sunset. I'm going to be a PT. That, 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 uh, that was what I thought the life path was. Uh, but TESPA, Again, not just for me, but for so many people, gave them those opportunities to make their dreams come true. And that's the most important thing, especially as we've kind of talked about that esports is such a young industry. The phrase I often hear is that we're at the bottom half of the first inning. Uh, we have to do everything that we can to set up the next generation for success so that this turns into uh, not, not just like a fad or something like that, but something that is sustainable, uh, that can be enjoyed, and that it can help people find their people, but also find themselves for, for generations, decades, whatever you want, centuries to come sort of thing. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, and Sylvia, what about you? So you're a, you're a pro player. So um, I know we have plenty of people at TCNJ and probably also just watching who aren't just necessarily interested in, in you know, the administrative community event side, um, but also they have skills uh, and they want to show that off. So what was your journey? What opportunities did you look for um, as a pro player? Um, honestly, uh, getting the opportunities I have uh, and trying to figure out what fits you and what doesn't, it's kind of through painful and bitter experience. Um, um, you know, the esports space is, I'd say it's a relatively new kind of space. And um, speaking from, let's say, the, let me use uh, the legalist kind of language. I'm uh, producing contracts and let's say being approached by people by let's say various teams um sometimes you have to like figure some of this stuff on your own because um the, uh, a lot of these contracts tend to be tied into non-disclosure agreements so you can't really speak about uh, you can't really speak about let's say what you're being offered and you know, not and even like looking through uh, what uh other people have gone through they don't actually speak about it so you don't you you don't know what's a what, you know what will be a, what's uh what the, what constitutes a good contract and what doesn't uh what's a bad deal so at um to kind of differentiate between what's good for you and what's not uh as kelly and adam have said uh, sometimes you have to look what are your values and what you know what are you looking to like um achieve in this space and on top of that you have to like you know, you, sometimes you have to just ask um, maybe the more older and experienced people in the industry, like, you know, don't, don't hesitate to reach out and ask, um, would this be a good deal? Uh, would this be a good deal for me? Like, that's what I personally did um, to try and get uh, what would be a good fit. And he, you know, he holds he was so kind. Of, he was kind enough to also do like background research into some of the orgs that were reaching out to me, and he told me don't, uh, uh, don't uh, send me this org because they, you know, they have A, B, C, and you know, uh, this may be a better fit for you. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the experience that I went through, and I just feel like in future we also need to have, I'd say, a more transparent discussion uh, with some of these contracts and NDAs to ensure that younger athletes you know, get something that's a good fit for them. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll speak to my own kind of experience for a second, you know, coming out of Lions Gaming, um, we really wanted to found the club on like three principles, which was community, competitive, and career. Uh, community, obviously we wanted to, we wanted to play good games with good people. Uh, so we wanted to foster a healthy community. Uh, competitive, we wanted to have, you know, the best esports team. Every club does, but, you know, we're TCNJ, we want to be the best. Um, and then career, which is something that I think this event queen really speaks to, is we didn't, we wanted you to graduate from not just the school, but from our club, from our, from our organization with actual skills that you can put on your resume and be proud of. So everyone who's working on this event right now, you have something to be truly proud of 
being able to produce an event like this. This is a real world skill that you guys are going to be able to take with you for the rest of your life, um, which is awesome. But uh, once I had graduated and left, left the coop, um, I was looking for an organization that really matched that. And to plug FFG again, um, on their website, they mentioned that they wanted to have a good community. They wanted to build career skills uh, and they wanted to have, put on damn good tournaments so again it's just it comes down to like really identifying those handful of values like you all said uh and really kind of sticking to that because you're you're worth that to be cheesy a little bit um not cheesy at all (laughs) but something else that you guys all mentioned is you all mentioned reaching out to other people finding mentors or finding peers uh and connecting with them and communicating um, so networking is huge in the esports industry, um, and it would be easy enough to, I think, ask you guys, like, hey, how do you network? How do you do that? Um, but the answer's kind of changed in the past year, quite a bit. Um, so what has that experience been like for you, networking in this kind of uh, new sphere that we have here? Um, and I think I want to start off this time with Sylvia. Okay, so networking for me, um, uh, what I did was I actually uh, created a LinkedIn account um, as a stu- as a student um, in Catholic at my university. That's the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. So I just created an account, and I also started going to let's say these uh, uh, comic cons, not uh, anime cons, and this kind of stuff because this is where my a good chunk of my audience is. Um, moreover, um, well, with some of the newspaper and online articles that are being done about me, I started like just po- posting them up on my Instagram, on my Twitter, on my LinkedIn, and that's how people started reaching out to me. Um, because you know they say they've they've heard about Queen Arrow, they want to know about uh, the space, they are willing to you know um, make it worth my time, and. Uh, that's uh, uh, pretty much it. And also, I also st- uh, started talking about it even during my classes with my classmates. And then maybe there'd be someone that, you know, they'd uh, link me up to who might have, uh, who might have some of the opportunities that, I, that, um, uh, that I'm looking for. So I also, uh, pretty much it's also about being active on social media, even if uh, that's not, uh, it may not be everybody's cup of tea knowing the kind of uh, hostile space it can be, but being active on social media, um, you know, being proactive and sometimes also just, uh, you know, taking that leap of faith and reaching out to maybe this, uh, to that, that person who might have the opportunity that you are looking for. Uh, I'll, I'll be completely honest, like I, the networking aspect of the past uh, couple of years hasn't been the best for me. Um, I, I think the pandemic actually made me go a little bit inward and like talk to uh, and, and reconnect with a lot of people who I hadn't seen in a very, very long time. That being said, though, making a LinkedIn is important. Uh, yes, definitely being active on social media is important. Um, honestly, I think uh, in my experience, speaking speaking to, to everything I've gone through in the industry, networking is something that, that happens usually when there's live events that you can actually go to. But besides from that, a, a lot of it comes from uh, actually the work that you do. Um, and so much of my own career has been uh, obviously networking by, by working with other people and other companies, whether it be working partnerships or just like working on things together. Um, and, and in that way, uh, people start to learn about who you are, what you value, how you work, and also the, your reputation for work, right? And, and that's why it's so critical to always uh, put your kind of best foot forward. Uh, the esports industry is very, very small, much smaller than most people realize. You don't ever want to burn any bridges. Uh, and, and everyone everyone talks, everyone knows sort of thing. So it's, uh, in, in that way, I, I think it's critical to make sure that you do good work and then also make sure that the people who you work with also think very, very highly of you. And, and that's not to say like be fake and, and to like put on this like mask and facade of, of who you want to be or, or like who you think you should be. It's more like we all know that there are certain qualities that makes someone a, a good person, right? Or someone who, who you want to work with sort of thing. And in that way, you should do everything you can to, to do that, right? At the end of the day, so much of esports is, uh, can you do the job that you're assigned and can you do it well? Uh, but also, uh, equally important is can you work with other people? Can you work with them well? And can you uplift and support the rest of your team? Um, that's what so much of 
not not just esports work, just just life work in general is right. Because if you're someone who uh, no one likes work with, with because you're just difficult, you're perfectionist, or or maybe you're just one of those people where when people work with you, they just feel exhausted afterward instead of uplifted and energized. Those are all things you kind of have to really consider when it comes to the whole networking thing. Uh, I, I would also just call out as well is that we do live in this great internet age, uh, right? So we can. Uh, one, not only can we learn almost anything at, the, at, the, at our fingertips, but also we can connect with as many people as you want to, right? So use social media, use LinkedIn, use your, your Discord servers, uh, just reach out to people, right? We, that's the kind of world that we live in. The, the worst thing that could ever happen is that they, go, that they ghost you. And second, bet, second worst thing they can do is they just say, nah, I'm good sort of thing, right? Like everything else is only up from there. And it probably only takes you, what, like 30 seconds to type a message to someone? Uh, so in that way, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity out there and sure it can be super scary, uh, but I think you, you'd be surprised at how many people in the industry are more than willing uh, to, to take some time out to, to talk to you, to help you uh, and to see where they can help you on your own journey. I know I do everything I can to uh, make my, my time available. I don't like blocking access, but at the same time, I know there are so many other people in the field who are even more gracious and, and who make it a really, really top priority to, to reach out and to make sure that they're able to help as many people as possible. And that's a beautiful thing about our industry. Yeah. And, you know, I think echoing something, Adam, that you said about, you know, work and your career, once you get into a career, also being part of what kind of helps networking. I think I've been really lucky, right? Like I've mentioned it or alluded to it, if you couldn't tell, I am not much of a gamer. Um, so I'm very kind of non-endemic to the sports area. And so I don't make a lot of my connections through playing games or going on Twitch. I had to have, um, if anyone knows Lindsay, uh, gamer doc, teach me how to use discord because I didn't know how to use discord. Like, I don't know a lot and I don't, I don't social media often, like, but what's been really a good blessing for me is where I am in my career and the, and the organization I work in. I've gotten to meet a lot of really great people from a lot of organizations. We work with the Gamers, we work with Wiggy, we work again with Gamer Doc, um, Queer Women of Esports, like a bunch of really fantastic organizations, Games for Change, all these great organizations. But what I think is really important, like, yes, I've kind of stumbled into those relationships by my work, but networking goes beyond just figuring out a way to connect with someone and send an email or meet them in person. You have to maintain those relationships. And I think that's a really important thing, especially during a pandemic where you can't maintain it with a cup of coffee or going to Comic-Con or going to like PAX West. Um, you need to maintain it by just keeping up those conversations. Like the reason I learned Discord was because half the people I was meeting are in Discord. And I was like, okay, great. I'm going to start learning and I'm going to keep up with those people, check in with them, have meetings every couple of months where you say, what is your organization doing? How can we help? Or just like, how are you? What are you doing? Like, how can we, you know, do things together? And that has been a really big blessing. So I think on top of however you decide to meet people, because everyone's different, the world is changing. It's changed already. It's changing more. You may meet people in person. You may meet them online. You may meet them through Twitter. Like, but are you maintaining those relationships and are you keeping up those relationships is just as important. So I would just stress that that's really been the blessing for me is I've been able to keep those relationships going and, and it doesn't matter how I've met those people in, at the end of the day. Yeah. I just want to add on to what Kelly said, just because I think it's so important in terms of like, for those of you who are just like, yes, I should maintain my relationships, but how do I actually do that? It's probably not nearly as complicated as you think it is. Like, don't be afraid to just say like, Hey, happy birthday when it's their birthday, you know, like a, a what someone normal would do sort of thing. Like it's, it's, it's totally okay to say happy birthday to someone or, or even kind of like what Kelly was saying, which is you could just say, how are you? How are you doing sort of thing? Like it doesn't always have to be work related. Just like, Hey, did you check out the latest Marvel movie sort of thing? Like this is what people do. Like it doesn't always have to be this hard professional glass wall sort of thing. Like the, it, it's not nearly as complicated as you think it is, or even just saying like, Hey, uh, uh, maybe maybe on a work call right before the meeting started, they talked about how they're a big fan of uh, uh, this music group, right? And let's say you were listening on Spotify to that music group because of your you know your your Discover playlist, and then you could just mention them, and be like, Hey, I just listened to this song. It reminded me of you. How are you doing? We should catch up. Like, there's it's not like this complicated web of like steps where you okay they say no here, okay then we go here. Like it it just talk to them like normal people because we're all people. And it's okay. It's everything's going to be fine. I promise. 
Yeah, no, I know I am personally uh, guilty of that. Um, I think, Adam, I believe you put it in uh, kind of the pre-prep meeting before yeah. that we kind of put up our own glass walls. Yeah. Um, which I think is a great way of looking at it. But yeah, it's uh, it can feel like kind of a hard mental block, but I think a good way of looking at it is like, okay, if someone, you know, randomly, quote unquote, reached out to you, you wouldn't be like, oh man, I hate this guy. You'd be like, oh, hey, I just heard from so-and-so. So kind of flip the script on yourself. And I think you'll find that it's a lot more open um, than it really seems. Um, so I want to ask... Um, one more question and we'll see where it goes from there but um i think i'm the kind of person i like kind of looking back and thinking okay what would younger emily think of this like and then kind of what would i say to myself like even just five years ago um so i'm wondering like what advice would you have to give your college age self like even if it's not that big of a gap you've like obviously grown so much uh professionally since from where you started um so i wonder like what you would say to advise or reassure your younger self so adam i'll start with start with you uh i i've i thought about this this question fairly often i and, and like it, it it's a interesting question in that like obviously everything that who you are as a person right is because the sum of all of your experiences beforehand so like regrets a very strong word sort of thing I don't know if I would go that far but if I was talking to young Adam freshman year Adam uh, I would probably say something along the lines of just like hey like that thing that you love this whole esports thing that you dream of every day like you can make that a career if you actually put in the work because I think so much of my early college especially especially before I went to retreat in 2016 was like hey, I really love this thing, but like, yeah, I can't make a career out of it. So I'm going to go be a physical therapist when the reality of it is not true at all, right? Like there were so many opportunities that I just didn't know about, whether because of simple ignorance. Like I remember senior year, someone told me, hey, Adam, did you know that there are Blizzard and Riot internships? And I was like, what? And like, the thing is, uh, I could have just literally Googled that for the three years beforehand, but I just didn't, right? Because of ignorance, whatever, it's fear, you insert a thing here, right? Uh, I didn't do my own due diligence. Uh, and that definitely was something that I look back on. I'm like, damn, I really wish I put in the work so I could have gotten those internships beforehand or something like that. Uh, so so it, a lot of it for me was just like, hey, like you can do this. Like everything that like you, you think, oh no, I can't because it's not good enough or I'm not good enough. That's not true at all. Uh, and, and I would have certainly dedicated myself to, to making the whole esports stream a reality much sooner if I had known one, that it was a viable career and also that I, that it was something that is, is certainly possible that you can do it. Um, and, and that's one thing I think that I love about esports as well, is I think there's so many different opportunities, especially given how open and the, the kind of world that we live in today, that there are those opportunities out there. Uh, but I don't know, at the same time, I, I went through a lot in college in terms of uh, the, the whole career journey of going this way and that way, and then winding up over here. So uh, it's hard to really say what would have happened if I had actually gone through it all uh, and, and started from the very beginning pursuing esports. So, but that's the wonderful thing about life. It, we, we don't know where, where the path takes us. We keep on going forward. I, so again, I think we're, we just piggyback off of each other really well. So I'll just kind of jump back in. I, cause you just said, you know, you go each way. Right. I would honestly say, and, and I don't know how, uh, how much this goes with what colleges are trying to tell people, but I think it's okay that you don't have a five-year plan. Like I would tell myself that like it, college isn't your end all be all. It's a great place to learn, a great place to get skills that are marketable and usable. And you should, you should take those and run with those, but you do not need a five-year plan. You know, I graduated during the first recession, um, one of the first recessions, and I worked retail management for like five years after that. Like I didn't, I didn't get a job in marketing and it's because people weren't hiring. So like, had I had a five-year or 10-year plan, like I'm not doing that now. And because I just kind of learned to roll with the punches and find what suited me best at the time, I found myself in one of the best careers I've, I've ever had. And, and I finally feel like I'm where I belong. However, I still tell people, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Like, I don't know. I might change my mind next year. Like I may want to pivot again. So I just think that's what I would tell myself. And what I would tell anyone is, you know, don't harp too much on the fact that you may not know exactly what you want to be when you graduate college and where you want to work. It's, it's going to change. It's going to change as you grow up because we're all constantly growing up and learning new things. 
Yeah. Um, I, so honestly, for me, I, I, I graduated uh, from university this year. So honestly, um, what I tell myself when I joined back in 2016 that one, things get better. So don't be, and um, as I be, as I start proceeding up, uh, oh, sorry, uh, as I started uh, going on with my esports career, um, I'd also tell myself, um, don't be too hard on yourself because sometimes I, I realized that at some point I was taking myself a bit too seriously and I kind of forgot how to have fun and just, you know, you know just, just be free. Don't take things too seriously. It's not the end of the world. Um, this um, earlier this year, I traveled to South Africa for Red Bull in the streets, and honestly, I, I I didn't do too well in the tournament as I was expecting, um, because I felt that I'd been playing at a, I'd been playing uh, quite well early in the year. Then during the tournament, I you know I got so nervous, I forgot to have fun and just you know enjoy the experience. So I took that uh, really hard, and I took. It took me like, I guess nearly a month before I, you know, I just fully realized that, hey, it's never that deep. I'm still young, I'm still growing, I'm still, you know, experiencing new stuff. And it's not the end of the world if I, you know, I didn't place as well as I expected to place. So, you know, uh, then yesterday I was at, uh, I, was an, I was at an anime con, so I just had fun with the, uh, I just had fun and enjoyed the experience. So that's what I want, I want to take, uh, you know, just, that's the lesson I want to take going forward, even as I, you know, continue traveling and continue, you know, attending more tournaments. Awesome. Yeah, and um, I think kind of to add to what um, you just said, Sylvia, um, I think the biggest thing that I've learned over the past few years is uh, definitely the art of self-care um if that makes sense you know you wouldn't uh sit at your computer and be upset if it's not working if you've been traffic trashing it for the past week um you really have to learn kind of to take time for yourself i know um some of the issues that uh, people might encounter when they're newer to the industry is uh kind of the the grind mentality can be very very can wear down on you very hard um and I know burnout can be a big issue, but I think if, you know, you kind of take time to yourself, even if it's just like a couple of hours before bed, just to kind of do something that you want to do, read a book, have a hot cup of tea or something, that's, that's my method. Um, but take care of yourself and make sure that you are still kind of <laughs> enjoying your days because it's real damn hard to wake up the next morning if you just feel that weight on you. Um, but awesome. This has been uh, an incredible conversation. It, it's almost three o'clock and I wish it wasn't because I have more that I'd like to ask. But that's how it goes. Um, does anyone have like any final words that they'd like to throw out there? I just, I, and I know we're wrapping up, but I just want to say what you just said, Emily. I also just want to like send that home because like I burned myself out in the beginning of my career in all versions of my careers. <laughs> and I'm finally, I finally realized that like, it's okay to take your time and to breathe and to like productivity and being a yes man or yes woman is not what matters. Producing good work and being honest about your time management and everything else is really what matters. So I just want to like drive your point home a little more because I learned that the hard way. I burned out. I left a job I thought I really loved and wound up hating at the end because I just worked myself dead. And now part of why I'm so happy is like, I know how to manage my time. I know how to do things well and produce good work without running myself ragged. So that's a skill to learn early. I just want to point that out. Like learn yeah. that as early as you can. It is okay <laughs> like, to breathe and to take the time, take breaks. Um, so thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, I, I kind of just want to triple down on, on, <laughs> on all of this really. So, so 
Um, the whole thing, right. We've been talking a lot about career and that's great. And cause that's what everyone's kind of worried about. You're going to spend the majority of your life, either sleeping or working sort of thing. Right. So yeah, like it's natural that we're going to focus on career, but I actually think as someone similar to Kelly and I'm sure Sylvie, uh, can kind of, uh, relate as well. Like I, I burned myself out multiple times in, in my, my short, short career, uh, so far. So m- m- what I would say is like, yeah, I talked all about like finding out that thing that you love and that's super important. Yeah. 100%. But the other a really, really important thing is like, uh, before you even get to that, I would say like, you should do all those things that you know that you're supposed to do, but you actually don't. Right. So put on that sunblock, do that skincare, go for a run, get that exercise, get enough sleep. It should be at least seven hours every night. Eat right. Don't do McDonald's every day. Fast food every day is not good for you. You know, we, we, we do all, we know that there are all these things that we're supposed to do, but we always put it off for one reason or another. Right. Um, Find something creative to put your time into. Uh, uh, go talk to that person that you can't stop thinking about. Tell your friends you love them, right? Like there are, there are so many things outside of uh, your career that are going to make you feel better, that are going to help you as a person and improve, that you're just going to be, uh, what's what we're looking for? Like uh, it, you're going to feel more whole. Uh, that, that, that's what I'm going to go for right now. That's the, the thing that comes to mind. Uh, and when you are able to uh, channel and, and do all those things well and take care of yourself well, trust me when I say like everything else kind of falls into place, right? You're going to be much better in the workplace. You're going to be much better to your friends, to your family, whatever, as long as you're able to focus on yourself and to actually do those things that you know that you're supposed to do, but you probably don't do for one reason or another. So uh, for those of you who are all listening right now, make sure that you do those things that you know that you're supposed to do. Trust me when I say they all pay off. Trust the process. It all adds up together. Um, so no. Should I say quadruple or not? <laughs> Everyone just said. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, I don't say is, uh, don't forget that or esports is, uh, is just like another sect of basically video games. Uh, for anyone listening, uh, don't forget that primarily, you know, games are meant to be fun. They're meant to be enjoyed. And on top of that, um, just you know and you know enjoy the journey um sometimes we may be so focused on you know getting uh, to our goals you know be, become some maybe some major esports star or whatever goals that we've set uh, established for ourselves in this space but also don't forget these goals and these um objectives um that's something that i learned from reading uh daigo the beast uh autobiography so you know just enjoy the process and you know just don't don't forget to have fun at the end of the day it's never really that serious awesome 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 uh so i have had a blast talking with you guys uh this has been incredible thank you so much uh for joining me here today um real quick where can people find you guys online Go ahead, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm, I'll tell you again, I'm not the biggest Twitter person. I would say, honestly, follow Evil Geniuses on Twitter. Follow us on LinkedIn. We post a lot of our initiatives that we're doing over there. Um, that's going to be the best place for us now. And if you are a college student and you're interested, our Genius League has events almost weekly um, and we're creating something really big and really awesome through our Genius League. So definitely check that out as well. Um, if you do want to find me, I believe my Twitter is Killer Kapowski. So twitter.com slash Killer um, Don't mind the uh, old, old roller derby, roller derby name. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's where you can find me, but definitely follow Evil Geniuses because you'll see a lot of the really cool stuff we're doing and, and doing in the industry. Okay. Uh, well, before I even get to, to me, I just want to give a big shout out to Emily for hosting the panel as well as TCNJ and Lions Gaming for, for having us here. And of course, my fellow panelists it was a great discussion. Very honored to be on this panel. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at Adam underscore bomb, bomb with two M's. It's probably my most active social media. Um, and I would definitely recommend you follow Esports Engine as well. And, and if you're just about to graduate college, uh, check out our job listings. We're, we're really trying to look for people to support our team and all the things that we're building here at Esports Engine. So definitely check those out, see what you like, see what you dislike. And for those of you who are aspiring, maybe you can use those as a little bit of a goal. Like, okay, here's actually what I wanna get to eventually sort of thing. So uh, yeah, but other than that, big shout outs to to everyone here. And of course, all of those watching who are listening, uh, really appreciate it, of course. Um, All right, so 
for me, uh, first of all, thank you, Emily. Thank you, Alexa, for having me and the other panelists uh, and just allowing us to share our own experiences. Um, so for Twitter, um, I'm not going to give you the articles. That's a whole other story. But just type Queen Arrow in the search bar. Uh, you're going to find me on Twitter. In, a, in as much as I am not too chatty on the platform, you'll mostly find me retweeting. But I do have some nuggets of wisdom in quotes. Um, on Instagram and on Twitch and YouTube, uh, I go by the Queen Arrow 98. And then on LinkedIn, I go by Sylvia Gafoni. Awesome. Um, and I am not a big social media user. If you can spell my last name right, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, and the easiest way to reach me is just personally reaching out through Discord. Um, who I'm going to make someone put that in the chat. Um, and then Futures First Gaming uh, is futuresfirstgaming.com. Uh, I'm going to take a quick opportunity to plug on December 11th and 12th uh, at Theater N in Wilmington, Delaware. We are having our two-day eSports e Expo Pandemonium 2021 uh, with Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, Fortnite both online and in person, Tekken 7, and NBA mm -hmm. 2K22. Um, we're going to have two more panels, three workshops. It's going to be awesome. So uh, definitely check out futuresfirstgaming.com for the information on that. Um, awesome. Thank you so, so much, guys. It's been an honor. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We yeah. really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Bye, everybody. Peace.